This presentation explains step-by-step -step how to sonographically evaluate the fetal spine. So why do we evaluate the fetal spine? We evaluate the spine as part of a routine obstetrical anatomy exam, which happens around 20 weeks. We're ruling out open neural tube defects, malformations, and masses. Specifically, we're looking for breaks in the skin, splayed vertebrae, tumors, or even exposed spinal cord. Before you begin the exam, be familiar with how the spine looks like in sagittal and transverse. In transverse, you'll see three ossification centers that make a closed triangle shape. Make sure there's intact skin line on top of that. Here's a simple example of the transverse view you're looking for. As you can see, there's three spiny processes here that make that nice closed triangle. And also, the skin line is nicely demonstrated. In the sagittal view, the spine will appear like two parallel lines that look a lot like a railroad track. Again, make sure you have that nice skin line. Here's an image of that sagittal view you're looking for. You see the railroad tracks, the nice curvature of the spine, and an enclosed skin line. Now we're familiar with the scanning planes, we need to document the four segments of the fetal spine. We're looking for the cervical, which is right at the neck. Below that is the thoracic segment. Continuing down, we have the lumbar segment. And at the end of the spine is the sacral segment. Okay, now we're ready to begin the exam. Have the mother comfortable before you start the exam. Make sure you ask her if there's any problems with the pregnancy. Once the patient info is verified, you can go ahead and start at the lower uterine segment to identify the fetal position. We need to have the spine up in the interior position to get diagnostic images. Once you have that optimal view of the spine, begin at either end, the sacral or the cervical spine, to begin. So here we see the sonographer trying to determine the fetal position. And it looks like that this baby is in the breech position. From the window the sonographer is in, the spine appears down. To get the spine in the interior position with it on top of the screen, swing your transducer to either side of the mother's stomach. Adjust your transducer to bring the sagittal plane into view, revealing the skin line and that nice railroad track sign. Once you have this view, continuously acquire images as you scan up the spine. So landmarks are helpful in showing the radiologist what area of the spine is being evaluated. The cervical segment is the most superior portion of the spine. The landmarks for this segment are the occipital bone, shown here, and the clavicles for the transverse view. Moving down from cervical, we reach the thoracic spine. The heart or the stomach can be your landmark for this view. If you see the kidneys, then you've gone too far. Even the slightest movement can move you to the next spinal segment. Moving on, we have the lumbar spine, and this is where you'll see the kidneys. They will be your landmark for the lumbar spine. The spine concludes with the sacral region, and the bladder is your landmark for the sacral spine. Be sure to image the spine coming to a smooth tapered end in the sagittal view. In the event where you simply cannot get the spine due to the baby's position, the mother must return for another exam. It's very easy to miss pathology on the spine that has not been properly evaluated. 